Twitter stories between Joe Biden and uh, Donald Trump has been pretty tight since the primary. We've seen them bounce and forth within the margin of error um, for the last few months here. But, at, but recently in the past few weeks, um, with mishandling of COVID-19, uh, with what seemed to be missteps uh, on where the country wants to be um, on, on protests and issues of race, we have seen a significant widening in this race. We see Donald Trump pulling, I'm, I'm sorry, Joe Biden pulling ahead by 10 points. But more specifically, you see Joe, Donald Trump trailing with some key uh, constituencies. Um, you see him now 20 points behind with women than where he was in 2016. Um, and those really do, they really do show a strength that Joe Biden has in this race and an opportunity that he has to, uh, to, to pull ahead and change the outcome here. Uh, first of all, thank goodness for my professional career that public opinion on June 1st isn't the same as it is on November 1st. Uh, there is a lot that is going to happen between then and now. And the down 10 numbers for the Trump campaign that you have in your latest poll uh, are within the margin of error of where the average is. We've seen a couple others that have been that high, a couple of worse. It's about seven on the average nationally. And that's, again, not surprising. Uh, because a couple things have been happening. As we've discussed previously, uh, you have base intensity that is just not fully there right now. And and uh, and you have some independents who are breaking the other way. And that's caused largely by two things. First, uh, lack of focus on economic recovery. Getting back to that issue is the number one way the president can uh, speak to his strengths and the issue that voters already have uh, a level of confidence in his capacity to get something done on. The second is being able to contrast with an opponent. Joe Biden has been kept in you know, cryogenic storage uh, for the last several months and has only occasionally been uh, brought out of the freezer to appear on MSNBC or something and then put right back in, where he has to emerge at some point and not only just begin to provide canned responses, but actually has to engage uh, with the president and ultimately on a debate stage. And what we learned from 2016 in the numbers is that the vote for uh, Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton was not based on uh, some sort of infatuation with one or the other, especially for the swing vote that mattered. In fact, those voters were voters who had an unfavorable view of both of those candidates. And so what mattered uh, in the 2016 election was who are those voters pointing their ire towards at any particular moment. For the last couple months, Joe Biden, having been out of the picture, has allowed the uh, ire of those voters to be focused on the president. The president has been front and center. And what needs to happen is a real campaign has to start between, and that means a give and take between the campaigns. Well, what's also interesting about Donald Trump's approval rating is that while it is beginning to, uh, to, to take a hit with, with white women, with college educated white voters, and in fact, Donald Trump's approval rating is increasing amongst black voters. And even in, in the Hill's latest poll, he has a 24% approval rating amongst black voters, which I'll tell you right now, if he can get half of those 24% of people to vote for him, then he is reelected. So, so, there, so he's having a very unique conversation with black voters right now. It's a targeted conversation. It's not one that he has at the podium in a nationally televised press conference, but it's one that he's having in paid communications on social media, a targeted conversation with black men where he's actually saying that democratic mayors failed to act on criminal justice. And that is why President Trump signed the First Step Act. And it's a conversation that resonates with them and, and unfortunately, it's a conversation that's happening in a vacuum where they're not hearing from, from, from any other candidates. And so Joe Biden does have an opportunity right now to tell a different story. The, the quote that you referenced, my hood didn't get any better under Obama, it hasn't gotten any worse under Trump. Most of us know that, that just is not true. You know that, that in countless ways, Betsy DeVos has made um, education in black schools worse, that Jeff Sessions, as Attorney General, did make uh, criminal justice relation, uh, criminal justice worse. Um, but unfortunately, we haven't had that conversation. We haven't actually told the story of how black communities are getting worse under Donald Trump. So as far as they're concerned, his tweets and his rhetoric doesn't actually make their life worse. 
And if we don't describe all of the ways that it has, and more importantly, the ways that their lives will be better under uh, a President Joe Biden, then, uh, then, then we're having the wrong conversation.